there have been a few things that we've added in our preferences and preferences are um, different ways of creating um, or utilizing aspects of the software so when you change something in the preferences it stays that way and it will always function the way that you set it in the preferences unless you change it and the preferences is located right here at this icon that's next to your zoom box here called program preferences or um, you can go to tools from the menu bar and then go to preferences so either way hit the icon or go to tools and the preferences box there's a number of tabs up at the top and you've more than likely been here before to change some settings some default settings and um, what we've added in this update in the environment tab is um, something that uh, has been requested where you can automatically select created paths and what this means is if I check this box if I create something um, it'll automatically select it after I finish creating that object so before I change that I'll just show you um, where we're at with the default so if I create I want to create a rectangle and I select the rectangle tool if I click and drag and create a rectangle notice that I'm still active on that tool and I can create as many as I want and once I'm done I simply right mouse click or click on the select tool and that allows me to close that out and and stop using it so let's say that I wanted to have it automatically select the box and turn the tool off after creating one of them and not keep not have it keep going until I stop so instead I wanted to select something right after I create it in the software um, with this new preference you have the ability to control that so if I come back up to preferences and I go to the environment tab and I check this box automatically select created paths and hit OK now when I come in here and I create a box notice that when I'm done it's automatically selected so the tools deactivated and it's automatically selected so that I can go right into properties and change things so it's a personal preference um, some people uh, like myself if I'm creating a design and I know I'm creating a bunch of uh, run stitches one right after the other I don't want it to stop after I create one I want to keep going with it so I can be efficient and but sometimes you want some people want to be able to stop um, right after they create a tool and change some settings so now you have the ability to choose how you want to do it so uh, again that's in the environment tab so I'm going to turn that back off the other thing that we have is the show a drop down menus on a hover so again to show you I'm not going to check that yet and so we have a number of icons here that have drop downs you can see here and um, you click the drop down to see the tool so that's how you access them so what we've done in the preferences is in the environment we have the ability to show drop down menus on a hover and what that means is that with the, I'm going to select it hit OK and now when I hover over one of those tools with my cursor it's going to actually drop down automatically without making me click on something so you can see that it's dropping down and now I can access those um, tools uh, without having to click something and that can be handy if you're using like a pin stylus or something like that um, it's a personal preference you know um, you don't have to have it to where it hovers and shows you the icons you can have it to where you click and again that's in the preferences um, under the environment tab I actually like to click it and um, instead of having it hover but like I said it's a personal preference so that is the new features inside of the environment tab and we do have one more that is in the view tab here so in the view tab we added one called draw selection type and so I'm going to uncheck this and hit OK so I can show you what it does um, it's going to be turned on when you install the software and I think you're really going to love this feature um, I know that 
you know, once I started playing with it, now I can't imagine not having it. So uh, I'm going to select this square right here. And when you do, um, you know, an update ago, we added these little quick shortcuts around the edge, which are very handy and very nice. Um, but when you select something, that's what you see. Um, with this new feature under preferences, view and draw selection size, when I select something now, I'm going to see those, but you'll notice that I can also see the dimensions of the design. I can see how wide the design element is and how tall it is. So that'll um, do it for whatever you have selected. So if I copy and paste these, um, a few of these, it's going to, you can see if I select one of them, I see the dimensions. If I select all of them, it's going to show me the directions of uh, dimensions of everything selected. So it's really handy. I, I love this new feature. I think that it, it works great. Um, and I hope that uh, that you enjoy that as well. So moving on, some other things that we have done is we've grouped some tools under a single icon and that's just to clean up the, the toolbar workspace. We've gotten to the point where we've had a lot of icons and for some people, depending on the resolution of your screen, sometimes those tools can kind of fall off the edge where you don't see them anymore. And so in order to help with that, we um, it wasn't an easy decision. We had to think about it a lot. We've been thinking about it for a long time. But with all these new features we've added and, you know, always getting more icons, we decided it was finally time to group some together to make it easier uh, and less congested on your workspace. So we hope that you appreciate these little changes and that it won't be too much of a hassle for you. It doesn't take long to get used to it and it's not really um, that big of a deal, but wanted to show you how that works. Um, in the previous build of the software, we had all these manual digitizing tools. We still have them, but what we've done is we've grouped them under one icon. So what I mean by manual digitizing tools is we have a manual stitch tool, a run stitch, a satin, a classic satin, a steel stitch, a fill stitch, applique, and there was an icon for each of them up top here and they all went along right in this area after the line tool. So what we've added is one icon in the middle called digitizing tools and it's this blue circle that kind of shows um, what represents like stitches here. If I click on it, it's going to bring me my manual digitizing tools. What we found is that a lot of our users are mostly using the convert to icons down at the bottom, meaning you create something and then you convert it to those stitches by clicking on something down here. Um, and so not as many people are creating or digitizing with these tools, but we've made it easy to access these by grouping them all under this one icon that you click and then you can select whichever digitizing tool you want. And uh, as I showed you in a little bit ago, you can make it to where if you hover over it, they drop down, show you. So it's really easy. It's not, it's not that big of a deal, but that saved us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So really six icons along the top. So it brought them in a lot closer and for some of you that have lower resolution screens you'll appreciate that uh, especially if they've kind of been hidden at times so that's the digitizing tools they're all located here another thing that we've done is we've played with the text tool a little bit because we're starting to get a number of icons here so right now you'll notice that we have one T and um, we used to have like three icons here but when you click on it, you'll get the regular text, the circle text, the vertical, the path. And then what we've done is we've added the monogram um, tool in under the text and the import true type font artwork. And so these all have to do with text. So we brought them all into this one icon and that saved us a couple spaces here. Some of the things that you might have noticed here before was we had font play and the font play icon has been moved over next to like the color play you design it and word play these are all kind of interactive uh, tools and it made more sense to put them together so if you click the font play if you've never used it it's a great great tool um, there's a video on it it was 
included in the last update that we did back in September of 2017. And it's a really cool tool. Um, lets you preview fonts, uh, what it will look, what text will look like in different fonts before you um, bring them into the software. So we, we moved it over here. One of the other things is we added um, in the last update in 2017 in, in September, we added a tool called um, the font importer, which lets you import fonts. Now this is a tool that, that uh, you use, but it's not very frequent that you use it. So uh, we removed the icon from it. The tool's still here. To access it, you go to tools and font importer. And when you click that, it's gonna bring up the font importer and let you map some fonts that maybe you purchased. Um, so those are some of the changes with the text area. Again, we've just added monogram and the the import true type artwork underneath of the text tool and again just saved us a little bit more real estate there so hopefully that makes it easier for you um, one of the other things that we did um, was we also added um, the same thing to the distribute which allows you to distribute things the left the right center and just evenly spaces things out like so for instance on this this one if I click distribute center you'll notice how these change locations um, you can see that it, it actually centers things so let me move this out a little bit more so you can see this a little bit better you can see that it actually gives you um, it distributes them evenly centered so it's kind of a weird um, way to kind of say it but um, and then you have all these different ways of distributing. So um, we added just so also, I guess I should point out, we only had a couple options for distribute and now we've added a bunch more um, ways to distribute artwork. So, um, and it works with three or more objects. And so we have a distribute to the left, center horizontally, distribute to the right, um, distribute horizontally, distribute top, distribute center vertically, distribute bottom, and distribute vertically. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. And you know, just to show you again how those work is kind of evenly spaces things out for you. And that's very handy. Um, I use it quite a bit. So that's the other um, grouped set of icons is under the distribute. One of the other changes that we did was in the way that you work with presets. And presets was added a while back and presets are very handy. So like for instance, if I just create a line here and I have it here and I want to apply a preset to it and the preset is something that is has a set of like stitch parameters applied to um, a certain stitch type and by using a preset when you select it it automatically changes it to those settings so if I come in here and I just click on a steel stitch it adds the normal default steel stitch If I go to undo here um, we used to have arrows for the presets it was next to each icon and we've removed the arrow and we've made it so now you can right mouse click and that brings up the presets and unfortunately it's actually going below the viewing window um, so when I'm recording this they're showing up but they're showing up underneath of the icon I apologize I can't make it go above it right now um, but I have an option for like a steel special, a white work lace embellishment. There's just some of the presets I have. So when I right click and I hit the steel special, which is one of my presets, when I click it, notice that it applies that. And the this one uses a very unique underlay um, before it does the top stitches. So the presets, um, they're very useful um, but now instead of having an arrow next to the icon you right mouse click on it 
to access the features. And you can also hold down control and click on the um, icon and that will bring up the presets as well. And so why did we do that? Um, part of the reason is, is because it, um, sometimes you could accidentally click the arrow if you weren't careful. And the other reason is, is it saved us a lot of space. It reduced, um, it reduced the equivalent of, uh, for space wise of five icons along the bottom. So before, if I had the software open, if we had the arrow next to it, you would not see these two icons because they would be way out past this workspace. So we really, we want to make sure that we have all everything in front of you and available to you. And we don't want you to have to go searching for stuff. And so we've been looking at ways to clean up the interface. And so I think we've done a great job of uh, grouping some icons underneath of a specific tool icon and then you know making these little changes with the presets um, just really helps save us some space and at the same time it's still really easy to utilize so those are the new um, features of the software some little changes that we made and we hope that you appreciate um, everything that we've done in this update we're very excited we've offered so many valuable tools to make your life easier and help you create things that you might not have been able to create before um, because of the complexity of things like white work lace and auto lace and shadow work and all of those things that we've tried to add some tools that will help get you creating things that you didn't think that you might have been able to do before. So we look forward to hearing what you have to say about our software updates and we hope you enjoy it. Thanks.